Hey there, everyone. We'll wait just a few seconds for everyone to jump on here, and um, hopefully we won't have any uh, hiccups with our bandwidth or anything like that tonight. And uh, So we're just going to wait for a few seconds so that everybody can have a moment to jump on, um, and we'll just wait patiently just for a few moments uh, while everyone begins to begins to jump on. Hey, everybody. Uh, good to see that you're all jumping on with us today. Uh, thanks for being with us. Day three, we're in day three. We just finished day two of our 21 together. And so tonight we're going to talk about day number three, which will be tomorrow. Um, and again, if uh, you're just now catching up with us, uh, please go back and watch day one and day two videos. It will catch you up on where we're at and what we're doing, and what's happening here and um, what we're praying, what we're believing God for. And um, we've already heard some pretty cool testimonies of some things that God is doing that are really, um, really awesome. Just in just in two days so far, we've already heard of people having visions and dreams. We've already heard of people waking up in the middle of the night and getting on their face before God and, and turning themselves back to the Lord. We've already heard of people... Um, People getting words from the Lord and it unlocking things that that have been inside uh, of people for a long time. They just didn't know it was there. And all of a sudden, boom, it's been released uh, just last night here at the house. Uh, we had an opportunity to just talk about what the Lord was doing and what we felt like the Lord wanted to do. And out of that came um, this thing that we're calling Feed the Need. And if you don't know anything about that, just go back and watch the video from Giving Tuesday that we filmed today, and you'll learn a little bit more about that. But that was a fulfillment of a dream that somebody had and something that was in somebody's heart. And just with a conversation, out of that comes this amazing opportunity for that dream to be fulfilled. So God is moving in our 21 days together. And I don't know about you, but, you know, just being three days into this thing, um, you know, we have talked about desiring, desiring the Lord. That was day one. And then uh, last night, we talked about deciding that we had to make a decision. So today, I just kept reminding myself, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Work out, work out, work out, work out. That it was a decision that I had to make every single uh, moment of the day today. Uh, a decision, uh, a decision to fast, a decision to pray, a decision to to remind myself of the scriptures of the day over and over and over again. And so... Tonight, we're going to get right into it, and day three, which is tomorrow, um, is all about reaching. So in your guide, it says reaching, and we have a specific scripture that we're going to use uh, for reaching, because, listen, we've made a decision, like we made a decision, but if you're like me, that decision that you've made has already been challenged maybe once, maybe twice, even three times. Um, you've already been hit with maybe distraction or temptation or maybe even discouragement. But I, I want to kind of dispel a myth that the enemy tries to bring against us, and that is you're not alone. It's very common. That's common. Temptation is common. Um, distractions are common. Discouragement is common. It's common to everybody. You're not alone. And a lot of times the enemy tries to get us in a place of isolation to make us believe we are the only one, and that is one of his major, major weapons is isolation. And so as you're getting on here tonight with us, I, I just want to tell you that whatever you're dealing with or whatever struggle or whatever temptation or whatever discouragement, you are not alone. You are not alone. What you're going through is not uncommon to anybody else. Um, you know, our adversary, the devil, he looks on our past failures and he doesn't want us to be praying. He doesn't want us to be moving to a place that's going forward. And so today or tonight, we are going to talk about reaching. We're reaching. We're not looking back, but we're reaching. And our scripture is Philippians chapter 3 and verse 13. Philippians chapter 3, verse 13. But one thing I do, this is like uh, Paul is saying, look, there's one thing that I do. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. Now, he didn't necessarily know everything that was ahead, but he was putting his vision 
toward what was ahead, not what was behind him, but what was ahead of him. And he says, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So Paul says, this one thing I do, I'm reaching forward. I'm reaching. Look, I, I desire the Lord. We, we talked about that on day one. Uh, one thing I desire, and Paul said the same thing, I want to know you, Lord. And then Paul makes a decision. He is deciding to go after the Lord and to follow the Lord. And, and then we get to this place. And again, Paul is the one who says, this one thing I do, reaching forward. I'm not looking back. I'm reaching forward. I'm not focused on what's behind me. I'm not looking behind me continually, but I'm moving forward. You know, those of you that know me well, this illustration, you've probably heard it a billion times, but it's so true. When you're driving in a vehicle, there's a reason why the rear view mirror is small and the front window is so big. The rear view mirror is there so that you can glance at what's behind you so it doesn't creep up on you. But the front window is humongous because it's all about where you're going. It's all about paying attention to what's in front of you. And yes, we do glance behind us to ensure that old enemies aren't sneaking up on us, that, that the enemy's not trying to bring something from our past against us, but we do not stare at the rear view mirror. If you stare at the rear view mirror, you're going to miss what's in front of you or you're going to hit or collide with what's in front of you. So Paul says, this one thing I do, I'm reaching forward. Like I'm reaching forward. Now, Paul is the same guy that when he was in front of the Sanhedrin or he was in front of the religious leaders or the Romans or the Greeks or whoever, he would always say, I was on the road to Damascus. He wasn't looking back to focus on that. He was using his past in the present. He was using his testimony in the present. He wasn't focusing on who he used to be. He was simply using that as an opportunity to testify of his meeting and his encounter with Jesus, but he was always reaching forward. So that's what we're talking about tonight. We're talking about reaching. We've already talked about desiring and deciding, but tonight we're talking about reaching, that we're, we're, we're reaching for a prayer life. We're going forward in our prayer life. We're moving forward in our, in our time of fasting. We're not looking back. We're not, we're not, um, we're not, we're not, focusing on our failures. Listen, you need to push delete on your failures of the past. You need to press the delete button on the failures of the past. You know, one of the books that, that our school of ministry reads is Failing Forward. And the book is all about that when you fail, you don't have to take two steps back or three steps back or four steps back. That in the kingdom of God, you can literally fail forward. That when you fail, you got to get back up. You got to let him pick you up. And then you go forward, not focusing on the past. Yes, we, we glance at the past and we use the past as a, as a, as a discipleship tool and a teaching tool of, of the present and the future, but we don't focus on those things in the past. We reach forward. So tonight is all about reaching forward. It's all about, it's all about us asking Jesus to help us to, kind of, to, to find the kind of prayer life that he has for us, that we can see it, we can have a vision of it, that that. The Lord knows that if we can see the vision, if we can have a vision for where we're going, that we will go that way, that we will go that way. You know, people perish. The people perish for lack of a of the vision, of, of not being able to look forward at what God is saying and what God is doing and to focus our attention on Him and to reach forward. This one thing I do, not looking back and focusing on the past, but I reach forward and I press on toward the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Man, I, I mean, look, I have enough baggage in my past that I could live in depression and I could live in distress and I could live in blame and I could live in self-pity and self-loathing and I could live in all of that every single day. And you know what? It wouldn't hurt anybody except me. It would destroy me. It would kill me. It's not hurting anyone else that has hurt me, but it kills me. And I'm not going to live in that. Listen, I have enough baggage in my past that I could make an excuse for everything. But we're not into making excuses. We're reaching forward. This one thing we do, we reach forward and we press on toward the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Come on, let's just pray right now. 
Come on, we're going to pray about reaching forward. We're going to pray about reaching forward. Lord, help us to forget the past. Lord, help us to to leave the past there. God, Lord, yes, we need reminders, and we need reminders of our past, and we need reminders of, of our testimony. But Lord, we're not to focus on our past, Lord. We don't focus on our past. Lord, help us not to focus on our past, that we press forward, that we're reaching forward to you, Jesus, that we're reaching toward a consistent prayer life. We're reaching toward a, toward a lifestyle of fasting, that we can walk in the authority and the power that you have given us, that Jesus, you gave us power and authority, not just through the cross, but through your resurrection. You gave us power and authority to walk in freedom and liberty, to go forward, to move forward, to take the next step forward, to desire you, to decide to take the next step. Lord, you've given us power and we are reaching tonight. Tonight, as we pray together, we are reaching forward, Lord God. We are reaching, all of us, we're reaching forward. We're coming into agreement that we are forgetting those things that are behind and we are reaching forward forward. That Lord, yes, we'll glance in the rearview mirror to make sure that the enemy doesn't bring up any old enemies. And I sense right now, guys, that for some of you that are on here right now, that the enemy is bringing up old enemies, old things, and trying to bring those things back to you. Old thoughts that maybe you have not had in a long time. And all of a sudden, boom, all of a sudden we started this 21 days together. And all of a sudden, these thoughts that maybe have been gone for a long time, all of a sudden these thoughts are starting to starting to come back. Don't buy the lie that you weren't delivered back then. Don't buy the lie that God didn't set you free back then. Do not buy that lie. The enemy wants you to think that you didn't get delivered. You didn't get free. That's why you had this thought. Listen, you did get free. You did get delivered. And now he's just simply trying to use these thoughts that come. Listen, you take every thought captive and you bring that thought under the subjection and the authority of Christ. That's what we do. That's how we go forward. That's how we reach forward. That's how we don't dwell on the past. Listen, I'm not going to dwell on the past. I am not going to dwell on the past. I'm not going to dwell on the past pain and hurt because guess what? I am healed and I am delivered and I am free and I do have the joy of the Lord and I could not have those things if I was living in my past hurt and my past wounds. I'm not going to do that. We're going to press on and we're going to reach forward toward what God has for us. We're going to reach forward. We are reaching forward tonight. And Jesus, we are asking you that you would help us to reach. Help us to reach forward. Help us to take every thought into captivity, into subjection, Lord God. Into subjection, not to us, but to you, Jesus. To your authority and your power. We bind up all of those all of those things that have kept us not just back, but kept us idle and kept us crippled. We will no longer be crippled. We are reaching forward. We will no longer be emotionally crippled or spiritually crippled. We are reaching forward. We are moving forward. We are going forward in the name of Jesus. And we declare that right now in the name of Jesus. We declare it. Now, I want to give you a scripture tonight as well that you don't have in your prayer guide for tomorrow. And that is Luke chapter 9 and verse 23. And in Luke chapter 9, verse 23, it says, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Reaching forward. So many times people think that, you know, following Jesus is somehow living in the past of what he did then. Listen, what Jesus did for you in 1997 it's not going to be much good to you right now. Yes, it was a testimony, and yes, God touched you, and yes, it was. It may have been awesome, but His mercies are new every single day. His mercies are new today. God's doing something new today. He said, Behold, I will do a new thing. Just watch what I do in your day. But you've got to be watchful of right now. You have to be watchful of what's happening right now and what's ahead of you and not focused on the back. Listen to me, and I want to be very clear, not because I, I want to be, listen to me, I hate the devil. I don't hate people. I don't hate um, things. I hate the devil. I hate the devil's schemes. I hate the things that he tries to use against people. And and sometimes when I, when I bring forth what I feel like God puts on me, sometimes people are like, wow, man, that's just kind of intense and it's, it's heavy. Well, listen to me. What the devil puts on you is heavy. 
And it's, it's going to take more than just a lighthearted word to break that thing. You're going to have to get serious with this stuff. You're going to have to get serious with Jesus and lifting him up and going after him with everything you have to break these things that the enemy has, has kept in your life. Listen, tonight is the best time for you to get rid of bitterness. Tonight is the best time for you to get rid of unforgiveness. This is the moment right now. This is the moment right now. Bitterness has to go. Unforgiveness has to go. That person that you hate, guess what? They are just like you are. No, 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 they're not. You don't understand what they did. Listen, God knows every thought you've ever had, every feeling, every emotion, every word that you've spoken, everything you've spoken about somebody else, everything you've spoken against someone else, and he still loves you and forgives you. And if we want to receive that, we got to give that. Listen, you've got to reach forward, reaching forward. One of the ways that we become more like Jesus is forgetting the past and we press on, we reach forward. Listen, you're not simply reaching for a new prayer habit or, or, or anything like that. You're not reaching for a new thing or a new program or a new uh, uh, 21 days of prayer and fasting together or anything like that. Huh. None of that. Yes, right, Shirley. It takes heavy to break heavy. That's awesome. Listen, you're not simply reaching for a, a, a new prayer guide or a new program or a new church program or a new Bible study. You're reaching for Jesus. That's what you're doing. You're reaching for Jesus. You want to see Him. You want to know Him. You want to be close to Him. You want to lay hold of Him. So let's do that right now. Let's say yes to His call. Because Paul said this one thing I do, forgetting that which is behind, I reach forward and I press on toward the call. So let's say yes tonight. Lord, we say yes to your call. We say yes to you, Jesus. We say yes to everything you want for our lives. We say yes to it. We say yes to moving forward, Lord God. We say yes to coming after you with everything that is within us. We say yes, Lord, for laying down the addictions of the past, laying down behaviors of the past that have kept us from you, laying down the attitudes of the past that have kept us from staying our minds on you, having the mind of Christ. Lord, we press on toward the mark of the high calling in Jesus Christ. We press forward and we say yes. Thank you for giving me a fresh start today. Thank you for giving us a fresh start as we decided today, as we were deciding today to, to, to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Lord, we thank you for a fresh start. We thank you that tomorrow there's gonna to be a fresh start. And when we open our prayer guides and we see that word reaching, it's a new day, it's a new start, it's a fresh start. Your mercies are brand new. And Lord, I turn my back on all past failures and I reach forward to your calling. Jesus, I'm following you and I'm never looking back. I am going forward. I am going forward. I am going forward. Lord, I'm not going to waste any time, God, looking back. I'm not going to waste any time turning around, staring at the past. God, I'm not going to waste time staring at the people and the situations that tried to destroy me. I am going to press on toward the mark of the high calling and I am going to see every situation and every person. I'm I'm going to see them under the blood. I'm going to see them with your eyes, Lord. I'm going to see them with the agape, compassionate love that you have. And I'm going to put my eyes forward towards you, Jesus. And every person in my path, I'm going to try, Lord, with everything that is within me as you anoint me by your Holy Spirit to love them with agape love, Lord. Not just a brotherly kindness, a choice to love the unlovable, but with an agape love, Lord God. A total, unconditional love, Jesus. And I'm going to look at every person in every situation of my past under the blood. Lord, we are moving forward. We are reaching forward, Jesus. We are reaching forward. Listen, in your prayer guides tomorrow, uh, you're going to see that uh, the scripture is there. This one thing I do, forgetting those things which behind, I'm reaching forward. And then that's the being part. The knowing part tomorrow is just taking a couple of minutes to pray. Philippians chapter three. Here's the awesome thing in prayer. When, when you learn that you can not only read the word, but pray the word. Listen, that very scripture, man, you can pray that scripture. We just prayed that scripture. So we're not only praying and communicating with God, but we're declaring his word back to him because his word never comes back empty. It never comes back void. 
So I want you to take a couple minutes tomorrow and pray from Philippians 3. Ask the Lord to help you to forget the past. And then in the doing part tomorrow, I want you to take a moment tomorrow to give an area of your life from the past to Jesus. Maybe it's a person, maybe it's a situation. Just hit the delete button on any bitterness or unforgiveness and walk in that tomorrow, in that reaching forward. And once you do, I want you to look forward tomorrow to reach out to someone new, forward. Leave someone from the past in the past. Listen, I'm not telling you to to, to, to look at people as your enemy because people aren't your enemy. The devil is your enemy. We love people. But that situation with that person in the past, listen, leave it there. Forgetting it. Leave it behind. And once you do that tomorrow, I want you to look forward to an opportunity to reach someone new. Someone new in your life. Reach out to someone new going forward going forward. And that will be our day tomorrow. Day three, everybody. Day three tomorrow. And uh, man, we are so thankful that you guys have been joining us and jumping in and also sharing these with your friends, your family. It's been pretty cool to see how this is all uh, playing out. It's been really awesome. And, uh, And God is doing great things. God is doing amazing things. And so as you go about your day tomorrow, just uh, walk in freedom and liberty. And also tomorrow, I want you to say a a prayer for my friend Carlos. Uh, Many of you have been following our Facebook lives from Dubai. And then as we've been back here as well. And Michelle is on a medevac right now coming to the States. She will be in Dallas um, tomorrow morning. And then Carlos will meet uh, meet the plane. And he will be going to Colorado um, with her to get everything situated and set in Colorado for her long-term care. And we're just believing God for just a a miracle in her life. The first steps of the miracle um, have already taken place. The first steps. Breathing on her own, medevac to the States, uh, Carlos not having to take the full load of the, the, the cost for these things. God has already moved in some pretty crazy, amazing ways. And so we we want to pray for him tomorrow. So just remember Carlos tomorrow and pray for him. And he'll be updating all of us um, through Facebook and letting us know what's going on uh, with the situation. But just uh, keep him in your prayers tomorrow. And I know that he would appreciate that uh, so very much. Tomorrow night, um, I may be coming from you, uh, I may be coming to you from uh, maybe even the healing place. So if you're at the healing place tomorrow night and in service, get on your phones while I'm on my iPad somewhere in the, or maybe, here's what may happen. Tomorrow night we may do the Facebook Live from church with some of the people who would have logged on live with me, and then we'll all pray together and we'll do that. So Wherever I fall tomorrow night at 8.30, that's where I'm going to come to you from. We're going to stay with 8.30, and, um, and we're going to try our best to make that uh, every effort to do that 8.30 every single night, and uh, it will be myself or one of our leaders. So if it's not me every single night, just know that something came up. I may be having to visit a hospital or, or do something else, but uh, every single night for 21 days, we're going to be together at 8.30. Uh, Central Standard Time. So um, we saw that we've had a couple needs that have, that have arisen, and even we've had a testimony. We've had a couple testimonies tonight of people that just like an hour ago were dealing with the thought issue of what I said, and and the Lord gave a word of confirmation to break that. Just an hour ago, they were having those thoughts and those those things happening, and the Lord gave a word just just like that. So. Uh, and I saw that uh, Shelly, uh, our friend Shelly, is sick. And here's a person who goes in the hospitals to pray for the sick. So uh, we just declare healing and uh, strength over Shelly right now in the name of Jesus, that she would raise up out of that bed tomorrow morning, healed, uh, completely and totally healed over Shelly right now. This is, this is a, a, a woman who... Uh, a woman of God who lays hands on the sick and sees them recover, who has the gifts of healing. And we declare that the healing that she believes 
you for, Lord, for others that that same healing is given unto her, Lord God. And we declare that tonight. We declare it as a group of people and we come into agreement that Shelly will be healed, that Carlos's travels tomorrow will be blessed, that God, he will be able to do everything he needs to do in the next couple of days to get everything established. And God, we thank you for just this time as we're reaching forward, we're forgetting the things behind and we're reaching forward, pressing on toward the high calling in Christ Jesus. Man, thank you guys for tuning in. Again, if you just jumped in or it was a little sporadic, watch the whole thing again and go ahead and comment um, uh, as you're watching. Uh, but remember, if it says was live, that means it was live, not is live. So, so bless you guys. Man, we appreciate you so very much. And I really believe there's going to be some crazy miracles happen in these 21 days together. So from... From my house to yours and wherever you may be, bless you guys and uh, love you. See you.